next on the list we have more news about DJ stuff again stuff that I don't really understand too tough so please forgive me for just covering it on the surface and just keeping it moving but essentially people got very annoyed or I saw people on social media getting annoyed because this meme was going around of a record label DJ collective booking agency whatever you want to called ghetto tracks or ghetto track ghetto tracks i think it's spelled with two x's actually um they was going around because they're called ghetto tracks but they all look like this basically caucasian or you know some semblance of white and i guess people were saying that the name ghetto tracks immediately kind of brings up connotations of black people and somehow black people have ownership on the word ghetto which is interesting because it feels like when somebody does label you ghetto and they don't know you just because of the color of your skin you take offense to it but then when you see a group of people who don't look like you're using the name ghetto, you also take offense to it because if you think like it's talking about you. It's like, I don't know, again, who knows what that stuff. I don't really take too much attention to it from the outside, but hey, I'm just going to talk about this because it's an interesting to- topic to speak about on the podcast. And I guess people are getting annoyed by it, but there was an image exa- actually of the label people themselves. If I want to quickly see if I can get it up on here. Latest, okay, it's not going to be up on here, but anyway. The consensus overall, this is really the consensus of what people were basically talking about. Um, this person said, a German label calling itself Ghetto Tracks. I'm not sure if it's an appropriation, ignorance or worse, total awareness of history or both. I guess what people are arguing, or again, I don't really agree with it, but I guess what you could say is that nowadays things have changed. And if you do want to call yourself Ghetto Tracks, you have to be aware and sensitive to the connotations that name brings along with it you also i guess that's the act of it this i guess there's also an aspect of it where some people would feel as if like if you're caucasian and using the name ghetto tracks you don't necessarily face the same hurdles or obstacles that somebody black would face if they were trying to um use that name in order to kind of propel their work right they would they would be getting judged in a very sort of like intellectual um almost um yeah, it would be it would be, it would be treated a lot more intellectually. It's like um, I guess it's similar to like you know football commentators. Whenever they're speaking about a black player, especially a young one coming up, there's always mention about athleticism and power and pace and stuff, right? But there's never really conversations. You're never gonna hear a um, a commentator to talk about a young black athlete, especially in football. Um, the same way they talk about a white one, especially if it comes to technique, especially especially if the player's big. Yaya Torre used to get it a lot. Yaya Torre, um, former Man City player, former Barcelona player also, a former Olympiacos player, um, obviously was very powerful, but was more so of a number 10. Even though he looked like he could be a number 6, or he could be a number 4, he played mostly in a number 10 role, like an attacking midfielder. So he was probably more similar to like a Pablo Aymar than he was to like a Patrick Vieira. But because he looked like a Patrick Vieira, people automatically kind of um, ascribed pace and power to him when clearly he was, had a lot more finesse um a lot more kind of you know um depth of touch um a lot more what was that word that people say um just a you just kind of he basically he basically played like a rose race right like he's basically he was more similar to like a michael ballack than he was to anyone else but they would never use the same words they use on the back that they used to use um they used to describe ballack they used to describe yao torre it was always pace and power so i understand why people are getting annoyed by it but it just again it depends where you fall on it do you think people change the way that they react to the or I want to train to be able to react to it. Are certain terms kind of essentially off the table if you're not from the place that that term is basically associated with? Because essentially it feels like a double dipping, right? You've got the benefit if you're white to basically use the ghetto tracks as a name. You don't get looked as a ghetto person, but then you also get to use the ghetto tracks, you know, sort of symbolism to kind of propel your artistic career forward. Same thing I think guess was getting said about those guys from Detroit. What are they called? Um, not they weren't even, are they from the Detroit? I don't know, but that group called the Detroit Swing. Remember, they, they changed their name now. I've got the name is now. I guess that was the same issue people had with that, right? They were basically double dipping. A couple of white dudes using their legacy and the history of Detroit, especially with the electronic or dance music. But then they have the benefit of not being kind of cast in the same shadow as the guys that were coming up in that scene, or maybe looked at a certain way, whatever it may be. But then they also get to use it as a thing to kind of propel their career forward and gives them legitimacy. So I understand. Another guy who I follow here says, like obviously the name Ghetto Track sucks and so does a cultural appropriation, but why focus on that when you've got Nazis infiltrating the dance music scene and brutalizing people trying to keep it alive? 
Another comment says here again, I can't take dance music social media seriously, outrage seriously. Sorry, when in Europe is on the topic. Sorry, uh, when Europe is on topic. While you're busy whining about a German label called Ghetto Tracks, name sucks obviously. One of the only independent French cultural magazines installing and reinforced door to protect itself from Nazis. Yeah, true. Um, again, another person says here the name Ghetto Tracks is racist and appropriative, but that doesn't negate what Turkish and Arab minorities face in Germany. Of course again it's just like it's just oppression olympics isn't it here right it's like who's who can claim sovereignty on ghetto who had it hardest right who actually grew up poor who actually grew up rich how does that contribute to your worldview um um does that make you more victim than i am it's just it's just nonsense it all is a nonsense really the wider to the wider scheme of things like there's so many issues at hand and forget even the what you mentioned earlier about the nazis you know trying to beat down the door of a magazine just in terms of being getting people like how are these people this is how these people has anyone addressed you know the disparity when it comes to these dj lists has anyone distress addressed the disparity when it comes to booking agencies the disparity when it comes to lineups in terms of race sexuality whatever people are just you know just going on as if like things are normal and okay when lineups are still the same relatively magazines are still covering the same people relatively there's no path really for the most part for people to kind of progress from being a bedroom DJ to being able to play in big festival stages anymore. You basically have to create your own thing, right? You just have to create your own thing. There is no kind of way to kind of go into the gated institution and kind of be ushered through unless you move to like a big city uh, with that, where that has that kind of infrastructure in place for you to plug into, like a Berlin where you can go through the residence program with certain clubs. Okay, so familiar people do. But for just a lame person, who has none access to us, who doesn't want to do that, just lives in the middle of wherever they live, but they have a passion for the scene. How do they go from being a bedroom person, streaming online for their YouTube followers, and then having the ability to play at Bergheim, having the ability to play at an ADE, having the ability to play at a time warp, um, coach, whatever you want to play, I don't care what your, what your dream is. How do they do that? There is, there is no way of doing it. And I think those things, in my opinion, again, sad, weird to say this, I think those things will address a lot of the tension that exists, because I think a lot of the tension and the anger that does exist comes from a real place because people legitimately don't think that don't see themselves see they're not being represented rep, they're not being represented represented is that the word right as i'm saying right on stages and stuff and they're also not being seen or heard right no one's acknowledging their pain or acknowledging their struggle so when they do see something that they can latch onto and kind of talk about and attack and use it as a thing to kind of beat home the point of like you guys not being fair, they'll grab onto it at any point. Do you know what I mean? But I think in general, if there was more fairness, if there was more, not 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 kind of sorry, not fair. What's that word called? Um, if there was just more opportunities for people, right? Again, not guaranteed outcomes because no one wants that, but just give everyone a fair crack of the whip. I think most people, it's a bad term in it, bad analogy that one, <laughs> but you know what I mean. I think most people would be a, would would not take this sort of stuff to hand. But I can understand if you're sitting there and you're struggling. You, like I, imagine you're a kid, right? And you've prep and you've legitimately come up against barriers to try and get a record label started because you feel like, like imagine, yeah, who's that? Who's that guy? I forgot what label it was. He was kind of accused of not wanting to release an EP because he felt like it was too black and too gay whatever and right imagine that that stuff is true imagine if there are labels out there that don't want to have certain artists on their rooster because they got they think it might ghettoize it or it might make it look a certain way cool so imagine you're that kid and you said decide to you know go under a moniker make another pseudonym whatever it may be you know create a fake profile and make yourself out to be some white kid from frankfurt and then you still not getting any headway and then suddenly you see this group or ghetto tracks <laughs> who don't look anything like you basically being able to profit on the place that you call home that you've kind of tried to propel yourself forward with and not getting away i can understand why they make you feel upset i can really do but it's not really that big of an issue i would say personally i think there's other pain points that exist and then of course ghetto tracks himself um this is their website you know it says here we're why ghetto tracks ghetto tracks is a vinyl only record label and booking agency for ravers from ravers to for ravers founded by best friends that have been breaking it down for many many years and still keep going tired of bullshit and sick of elitist rave culture so they're actually representing a good cause right they're actually most of it again i always said before most of dance music stuff it's always a reaction 
go to a club night, hear someone that's playing that shit, somebody that's amazing, you react to it, you set up your own label, you set up your own club night, you start DJing yourself. That's all dance music is. That's why I say everybody is crucial. Everybody has a valid place in it. Even if you're crap, even if you're good, you play a vital role in this scene of us because everyone reacts to what you're doing. Um, use this inspiration, use this fuel, whatever maybe. They actually did the same thing. I quite don't mind their logo. Um, but this is their post, them reacting to all the kind of backlash they've been getting online. This is the following um, on an Instagram page. It says, hey, friends, we just went to quickly seize a chance to address a few and admittedly funny memes concerning our name going forward to court. I'm glad they said it was funny because let's be for real, right? This picture is flipping hilarious, right? <laughs> let's get on track. I think there was another one too with that, um, all those guys in a row, like a tennis match with their mouth open. But that's, that was a quality meme. I'm glad they could laugh at themselves a bit. Um, our label was founded by two Turkish Germans who in 2000 and 2010 had difficulty getting to clubs in Berlin or Hamburg and many Arab or Turkish people there still have. Growing up in 2000 and 2010, we have been subjected to racism in public discourse, personal life, and in this case, more importantly, we have been the dance music scene of any city we lived in. So what they're basically trying to say is that Turkish people are the niggers of Europe. Is that what they're saying? No, I'm joking. Um, it is true though, because I do remember this is a bad thing to say. But I do remember from watching the series four blocks or 40 blocks, something on Amazon, um, you know, basically having an insight into the kind of struggles um, that the Turkish population face there in Germany and specifically in Berlin, because that's where the TV series is based. And then one time I went to Berlin myself, um, I got speaking to an Uber driver, as you do, and he was basically echoing the same things and basically saying that how a lot of his friends who drive Ubers and shit sometimes have resentment for people like myself under those are people coming from abroad who are able to basically who are kind of welcomed in their city with open arms without being able to speak the language despite turks themselves who come over um making every effort to speak the language because of course no one's going to speak turkish to you if they're non turkish right so they definitely have to learn the language they get to learn language and still they're kind of looked down upon and they kind of he said to me like a lot of his friends sometimes i think i think i was saying something like oh some of my friends have had bad experiences in uber and he said maybe some of it has to come with it from the resentment they feel i'm from outside um especially people that look like myself right it, like imagine it's compounded even more so if it's a black person you're like bloody hell i'm getting treated like shit i'm turkish and then you're treating the black person better than me and you can't even speak english um which is already is a bit funny but you know what i mean so I, I get where they're coming from i get that there's pain there but again oppression olympics it doesn't really matter everyone goes through shit no one has a flipping, no one owns the term ghetto. The ghetto is all around the world. Ghetto is a fucking, like, the definition of ghetto, that's nothing to do with black people. What is the meaning of it? Let's just Google this quickly. Nonsense. They're part of a city, especially a slum area occupied by minority groups. That could be anybody. Anyone's a minority, right? Like, it doesn't put in the coverage an isolated or segregated area. Of I understand. I understand what people would say, but hey, let's just relax. Next slide. Um, we understand and we value how the term ghetto has come under scrutiny in recent months. Um, white and upper middle class artists in the US and wider um, Anglosphere appropriating the term ghetto to promote their music to their own financial gain and nullifying its political cultural significance is certainly problematic. I'm wondering, it's a slight after or slight side thought. Because I wasn't, again, even though um, Nina Kravitz, Ghetto Kravitz, that track was like one of the, like, when I first heard, again, I first heard that out in Berlin for the first time in my life. I think that was probably my first introduction to maybe dance music of that scene because I was familiar with the deep housey sort of side of things, but I didn't know what that was, right? I was like, what the hell is this? And I remember at the time hearing it thinking it's amazing. And of course, you know, digging deep and kind of, you know, obviously having a love for electronic music that I have now at the moment. But I wonder when that tune originally came out, how did people react to it when she called the song Ghetto Gravis? Did people have a problem with it? Were people all right like when it actually did come out at a time i wonder but again it's a different world back then isn't it? maybe people were safe with it. i don't know if you're around during that time please let me know in the comments um it could the next slide we noticed that people on the dance floor were almost exclusively all white students from the upper middle class immigrants or working class people were either turned away at the door or didn't even bother coming in the first place we then started hosting parties ourselves to combat discrimination and gentrification of the dance floor again noble cause these guys seem cool to me this course, however, this discourse, however, shines a light exclusively on the U.S. and Anglosphere and completely neglects the recent history of the use of the term in Germany. It was a gangster rap from the U.S. that brought the term ghetto with its cultural significance meaning back over to Germany in the 90s and early 2000s. Again, he's right about all this stuff. Um, that term was embraced by German hip hop and was subsequently weaponized by the white. Um, I don't know what that term is. 
um, to racially discriminate Arab and Turkish immigrants communities, as well as denigrate poor white working class people from most of the German gangster rap scene, which I guess is dominated by a lot of those people from those kind of areas. I'd imagine so. Because all the videos I see of German rap comes from guys who look like they're Arab of Turkish descent. So again, this is all lining up for me. Having expressed race, sorry, having experienced racist discrimination involving the term ghetto ourselves and now being called out for using it hurts. Exactly. Imagine that. You get called, get, you, you're getting discriminated against in Germany, right? For your background, for your color, for your creed, for your religion, whatever it may be called. You're being others, you're being kind of alienified, whether that's if that is even a term, by being grouped under the term ghetto. You then try and um, embrace that term and use it for good. And then it's being weaponized against you again from people who have faced maybe worse discrimination who probably should have, you sh they should feel like they have allies right in the kind of um when it comes to conversation around ghetto right they should feel like everybody around the world should kind of identify with their struggle because in every part of the world if you're a minority you basically experience some level of discrimination right the, 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 no matter where you are for sure you've experienced some of it maybe not all the time but you've experienced some so you see where they're coming from but then to have people on social media basically telling them they have to change their name is mad. I hope they don't change their name, by the way. I hope they don't change it to whatever Turkish um, translation is of ghetto. Don't do that. Just stick with the name. It is what it is, isn't it? Just standard. It's a, it's a different thing in Europe. Um, or a different thing for them as well, what they're going through. You continue to say, same goes to the artists on the roster who may be read um, as white from an American standpoint, but have faced discrimination in German nonetheless. Talking about their roster, someone on that roster might have to change their name because um, that name is i saw that name and i thought what that name is fucking wild as a dj name maybe something else you think of in your you know in those kind of countries i don't really know um but um, the dj might have to change their name in yeah this one rita retarded yo it should be rita redacted because we don't use that term anymore nowadays but calling yourself rita retarded is mad isn't it like that is legitimately one of the maddest names I've heard. Like I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I was like, what? Why would you even call yourself that? Like Rita Retarded. That's such a bizarre name. I guess we can click on her profile and see if she's got any explanations as to why she was called that. When I was growing up, my dad used to say I was retarded. So sure. What's the name? Um, Rita's journey began in, where is that? Where's Sil? Sile, Sile, and shifted further east ever since from hell to now Leipzig. Okay, so I guess that's a place in Germany. Um, continuing on the rate, she's probably will uh, have circled the earth around about 20 years. DJ Proper is always the worst. Uh, my one's not, my one's equally as cringe, is what it is. Her first exposure to electronic music was listening to old school house and rave music in the cars of various relatives. <laughs> In the cars of various dudes you hooked up with in secondary school. I don't know, I'm Anyway, um, either inadvertently or intentioned, they passed the affinity on to her as well. When she was 14, Rita was then guided through um, further into the depths of fast paced club music by her friends who showed her dubstep, techno, and DB. Okay, we know what she's about. She probably wears Air Maxes and she doesn't assume, right? Yeah, probably does. Um, she picked up DJing in 2018 and inhale. Oh, I get it. That is a place in Germany. What am I going okay and quickly established herself as a household name in the east german scene in leipzig collaborating with bake the cake um series and the record store very where she was sucked even further into the aforementioned depths of club music you might find her right now in very um waiting waiting for you to get yourself some hella delicious coffee and cake and at least a good record rita says so they call her rita they don't they don't say retarded retarded says range from hip-hop jazz and soul of a particular imagine going to a club night and seeing somebody imagine going to a jazz club night and seeing somebody on a lineup called rita retarded what um get a tech to judge by yourself fucking bizarre name to call yourself in it i think yeah last time i checked on instagram she was privated so maybe that was a recent thing but i doubt it you know a young girl that djs on instagram you're probably not gonna have your account on private she probably privated it because she got loads of abuse which you know <laughs> Well, it is what it is um but yeah you need to change that name asap my dear um you really do just for your own sanity because they're not they're, they're not going to stop getting at you if you don't change your name and it's just such a nonsense name anyway do you know what i mean it's not even that rita the first name is perfectly nice just call yourself rita or double r or something i don't know but yeah you'll figure it out 
Um, next on the this on the list of this topic. Hopefully, I'm not boring you with this, but it's just some of my timeline, so I just wanted to talk about this. Um, quickly, we finish this quickly. It says we appreciate the wider discussion around this topic to some degree, but its foundation lies in overly complex academic discourse that is inaccessible to many people that have. Um, that too heavily relies on academic works describing the reality of America or Britain. The inevitable shortcomings of sh projecting this discourse onto Germany are further amplified by the frankly shocking lack of Turkish or Arabic people within the scene in Germany. Very true. Basically saying, you're talking about us, you're talking about our struggle, but then we're not even the ones in the conversation. You're talking at us or to us. We're not even the ones like sitting like, side to side to side, which is completely, completely... Um, and while we can understand why there is a lack of Turks and Arabs in the scene, many of the people patting themselves on the back for being well first in academic online, this school's probably can't. Well, I, lo I love how they're coming out with this. So we appreciate the friction our name causes and we will continue hosting truly inclusive parties. Big up ghetto tracks. Okay, cool. I, 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 I like that they, they, took, they, saw the, they saw the humor in it in some regard, defended themselves as best as they could and kept it moving. But yeah, I wonder what you guys think. Again, there's loads of comments on here. Everyone's writing their essays and kind of getting there. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. People are going hard with the comments. Um, but yeah, someone said something about the Raiders. After research, man, shut up, man. Like, what? You're equating the Oakland Raiders with fucking and oh okay I, I'm I'm out man I'm out I'm out but anyway if I'm if I'm wrong let me know in the comments um if I'm right let me know in the comments I doubt I am because I think a lot of people have a very strong opinions when it comes to this sort of stuff but I think if anything we need more of this we need more of this kind of discourse more of this sort of kind of conversation around representation in general I've always said it from before that's why I've been never a big fan of this whole crap about gendered lineups there's an issue in general representation overall right like I said like go on any EDM page. Most of those EDM pages that talk about, you know, Tomorrowland or whatever have always got really scantily clad, amazingly attractive girls on there wearing amazing outfits. But none of those girls are ever playing on the DJ lineups. None of those girls, I'm sure some of those girls want to play. Cause that's, that's the same with all of us. We went to our first festival, we went to our first club night and we got inspired. And then we decided to become bookers. We decided to be photographers, to be DJs, whatever. We all did the same thing. We all came through the same path. And I'm sure there's some girls in those groups of people who go scantily clad who wouldn't mind being a photographer, who wouldn't mind being a DJ. But you don't see any of those girls on the, on the stage on the lineups. It's the same old 17 million blokes who all look the same. Fucking crappy DJ names. They have the worst DJ names. Worst ones. And they have no representation over there. So again, that isn't a, even a gender. That isn't even a gender thing. That's just like a... Can we just get different people on these flipping lineups, please, for the love of God? So you can't even say it's a gender. Well, if you want to say a gender thing, cool. But then it's not, what are you going to do then say? It's a gendered race thing. No, it's just a straight up, let's get some new fresh faces on there. We don't have enough of that. And again, a place like Berlin is kind of, I would say it's pretty rich in terms of its multiculturalism, so-and-so. Um, so if that's the case, why can't their club scene, or even Germany in general, and Berlin, Berlin probably mostly, rest of Germany probably not so much but in general why can't the club scene be a little bit more varied why is it all the same flipping genre why can't you not find any decent hip-hop disco and whatever nice going on there that sort of conversation needs to be had and the sort of discourse I think is going to bring about some of that hopefully in, in the end again pick up ghetto tracks hopefully stick with your name don't bend on that one it's a retarded you need to change your name ASAP that name is you know it, it is retarded like just to, to call yourself that especially nowadays just making a rod for your own back it just makes no sense just allow it move on um why would you do that it's similar to like i always thought to myself like similar to the other girl what's her name that i think she's berlin as well germany what's her name jamaica sook i was surprised no one kind of came after when everyone's trying to tell people for their names it's like why would you call yourself that just unnecessary you know what i mean i think some people just enjoy the pain of having to go through the defending thing it's just unnecessary just I, I, maybe that's just her name and her parents you know white people and calling their kids after flipping destinations ever they traveled on but um yeah weird 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 debate 